Hey Sanger Sons, it's Mrs. Gloom and today we're going to read a book called Curious George Discovers the Rainbow. Adaptation by Amy E. Cherix, based on the TV series Teleplay, written by Michael Maurer. It was a beautiful day in the country. Steve and Betsy were visiting from the city for the first time. George couldn't wait for their outdoor adventure to begin. But first they had to unpack. When Betsy dropped her books, George rushed to help her pick them up, and that's when he saw something he had never seen before. Something amazing. That's a rainbow, George, said Betsy. See the pot of gold at the end and the leprechaun? Rainbows are always the same seven colors, red, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, and violet. Then over here it says, did you know, when you look at a rainbow, our eyes can only see the seven basic colors of the rainbow, but there are more than a million other colors in the rainbow that our eyes cannot see. You can remember the seven basic colors of the rainbow by remembering the name Roy G. Viv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Rainbows are created by the sun and rain, Betsy explained. But I can make a rainbow without either. You want to see? A rainbow inside? George could hardly wait. Betsy used scissors to cut a slit in the center of the sheet of paper. Then she taped the paper over a flashlight and shined the light through a fishbowl full of water. A flashlight is like a sunbeam and water is like a giant raindrop. The light shines through the water and behold, Betsy said proudly, a rainbow. And over here it says, did you know a rainbow is actually made of water and light? The sun's rays bounce off raindrops. This is called reflection. The raindrop shape bends the light in many directions. This is called refraction. When light bounces and bends off billions of water droplets in the sky, a rainbow appears. And here's how you could test it out at home. Just like George and Betsy did. George thought Betsy's rainbow was nice, but there was no leprechaun and no pot of gold. George wondered if he'd ever see a real rainbow that spanned the whole sky. Have you? He looked out the window. White fluffy clouds floated by. Looks like a nice day, said the man with the yellow hat. And over here says, did you know there are three basic kinds of clouds? The wispy clouds outside George's window are called cirrus clouds, meaning ringlet or curl. They are usually white and mean fair weather. Stratus clouds are gray and flat like sheets. They can produce rain or drizzle. Cumulus clouds are white and fluffy like sheep. They are often called fair weather clouds, but can bring thunderstorms when they grow bigger. Meanwhile, the man helps Steve prepare for a hike. Have you ever seen any wild animals? Steve asked. We've got skunks and deer. I've even seen a moose or two, the man replied. A moose, Steve said. Now there's something you don't see in the city. Over here it says, did you know plants and animals rely on the weather? The right balance of temperature, rain, and sunshine makes plants grow so people and animals will have food to eat. Too much water destroys a plant's roots. Without enough water, they dry out. All of these things, land, weather, living things, make up an environment. Not every environment is right for every animal. Moose prefer quiet mountain environments. That's why you won't find them in the city. What other animals might you find outside of a city? At last, it was time for their hike. Outside, the sun was shining, but the temperature was cooler, and more clouds were rolling in. I'm driving into town to get food for dinner, said the man. Just then, thunder grumbled low in the distance. If it rains, head home, he added. George knows the way. Over here it says, did you know that thunder and lightning are partners? When there is thunder, there is always lightning, even if we can't see it. When a bolt of lightning shoots through a cloud toward the ground, it creates an open space in the air. When the light vanishes, the opening is closed. This creates the loud boom sound. That's thunder. We may not see lightning if a storm is too far away, but when a storm is close, we always see lightning before we hear thunder. Can you guess why? Because light travels faster than sound. George led them into the forest. I am not leaving without a picture of a moose, Steve said. Just then he felt a raindrop. Oh no, not rain. Do we have to go back already? I don't think so, Betsy said. It's probably going to stop soon. Look, the sun is already peeking through the clouds. S 
sunlight and rain at the same time? Could this be George's lucky day? Sure enough, when he turned around, there was a huge, colorful rainbow arching across the sky. His wish had come true. That's the biggest rainbow I've ever seen, said Betsy. George was excited to have found the rainbow, but he couldn't see the pot of gold from here. Steve was excited, too. I'm climbing this tree to take a picture of the rainbow, he said, scampering high into its branches. Over here it says, Did you know that even though a rainbow looks like an arch, when seen from the ground, there is another half you can't see? If you could look at a rainbow from high above the ground in an airplane, you would see that a rainbow is actually a full circle. From the ground or the sky, the best time to see a rainbow is during a light rain or just after the rain has stopped. Rainbows are even better during sunset because the sun is low in the sky. George needed a better view too. He knew if he was going to find the pot of gold or see a leprechaun, he needed to get closer. So what do you think he did? George ran off in search of the Rainbow's Inn, with Charky close behind. Charky, George, wait! Betsy yelled, chasing them through the rain. When Betsy finally caught up with him, George tried to explain that he had wanted to reach the pot of gold. But no matter how far or fast he and Charky ran, the Rainbow only got further away. Did you know that a rainbow is an optical illusion? That's a trick of the eye that makes us see something that isn't really there. We can see a rainbow, but we can never actually touch one because it's only made of light. The leprechaun with a pot of gold is just a fairy tale, said Betsy, but I guess it couldn't hurt to look, just in case. Could it, Steve? But Steve was nowhere in sight. He'll catch up with us, said Betsy. Let's keep going. They hadn't gone far when something small and green hopped through the bushes. Could it be the leprechaun? George thought he must be getting close to the pot of gold now. But it was only a green frog. Usually George would be happy to meet a frog, but it was no leprechaun. George wasn't disappointed for long, though, because the frog had led him to a second rainbow. Sorry, George, Betsy said, that's not another rainbow. It's only the reflection of the rainbow on the water. How will we keep chasing the rainbow now? We need to cross the river. Over here it says, did you know there is a such thing as a secondary rainbow? When light does not escape the raindrop after being reflected the first time, it reflects off the raindrop surface a second time, creating what looks like a double rainbow. But most of the light is already used up, so the second rainbow will be harder to see. If you're near a body of water when there is a rainbow in the sky, you might also see a reflected rainbow like George did. Just as the raindrop reflects light, a lake, pond, or even a puddle can reflect light too. Just then, Charky dar darted through the bushes after the frog and found what they needed most, a boat. Uh-oh, Betsy said as they floated away. How will Steve ever catch up with us now? Meanwhile, Steve realized he was all alone. Charky, Betsy, George, where are you, he called. Suddenly something moved in the bushes. What do you think it was? A moose, Steve shouted, snapping a pitcher. But the moose didn't like Steve's loud voice or his camera. Steve was scared. He was about to call for help when he heard a voice. Back away from the moose slowly, the boy said. It was George's friend Bill. He knew a lot about the wilderness. And whatever you do, don't frighten it, Bill added. The moose walked off into the forest. Did you know that moose are good swimmers? When temperatures rise, they keep cool in mountain lakes and streams. Moose are also very heavy and fast. They weigh up to 1,500 pounds and can run 35 miles per hour. If they feel threatened, they are considered more dangerous than grizzly bears. When the coast was clear, Bill introduced himself. I'm Bill, and you're lucky I found you. Moose can be dangerous. Hi, I'm Steve, he said to Bill. Since you're so good at finding things, maybe you could help me find my sister and our friend George. I know George, Bill said. Follow me. I saw his friend in town. He'll help us. 
Steve, said the man, where is Betsy, Charky, and George? We got separated in the woods, Steve said. I don't know where they went. Just then, something sparkly caught his eye. More rainbows. And it says, did you know a prism is an object that reflects and reflects light? Raindrops are prism, and so are diamonds and crystals. Light bounces off of their surface and separates to create rainbows. Oh, yeah, Steve remembered. George saw a rainbow right before they ran off. If I know George, I bet he wants to find the gold at the end of the rainbow. I have an idea to help him get home, the man said. When George, Betsy, and Charky reached the shore, daylight was fading and so was the rainbow. George knew they needed to get home before dark. There was only one problem. He didn't know where they were anymore. And over here it says, Did you know colorful sunrises and sunsets are also created by reflection and refraction of light? The sun is low in the sky during these times of day. Light bounces off dust, gas, and air particles in the form of tiny prisms. The result is a bright display of red, yellow, and orange across the whole sky. Remember, even when you can't see the sun rise or set because of rain and clouds, it still happens every day. Suddenly, Charky began to bark. Something was glowing from the end of the rainbow. It must be their pot of gold. George, Betsy, and Charky raced toward the light. George, over here, called the man with the yellow balloon. He was standing on the roof of their house holding a bright shiny balloon that was wearing a very familiar yellow hat. George was happy to be home with his friend. There was no pot of gold, but he knew he had found the real treasure at the end of the rainbow.